Welcome everybody to the European Challenger Series 2014 second spring series here and of course brought to you thanks in part to our friends at Coca-Cola. I'm David Freak Turley and a big happy birthday goes out to Aiden Zyrene Moon. What up? Not much man. I'm having a great day so far mm -hmm. and what'd you get me? Uh, Challenger Games. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> I knew everything, guys. Coming up today, we have the first Challenger quarterfinal matchup of the second spring series, the top-seeded Cloud9 Eclipse versus, versus eighth-seeded Departed. Let's take a look at the bracket when we start things out. You can see tonight's teams hanging out here at the top of the bracket, and just below them is tomorrow night's quarterfinal matchup, which is Osomniac versus Steve Bix Cookies. And in the bottom half of the bracket, it's the final two quarterfinal matches, and it's Meet Your Makers versus Reason Gaming, and the Ninjas in Pajamas versus Gamers 2. And just a heads up, those will will be played back to back on Wednesday, March 12th. So mark your calendars. Remember to do that, guys. And remember, it's not just where the teams finish in this series, but also how many points they acquire over the two halves of the spring. That's what that's what actually determines who goes to the playoffs. Let's take a look now at the point standings to see where these teams stand. Now, the six teams with the most points will advance to the aforementioned postseason with the top two teams earning a first round bye. And both of tonight's teams already have some points in their pockets from the first half of the spring series, with Cloud9 banking nine points for being first and Departed holding on to only one point from being knocked out in the round of eight previously. Exactly. So now that we're into the quarterfinals, these standings are about to change because every team that's made it so far has guaranteed at least a couple of points. While the winner of tonight's games will be looking for a big payoff in the near future, the losers don't go away empty-handed. Yeah, and the teams that come up short will still get two more challenger points, and depending on how the series shakes out, those two points could be enough to get them into the postseason. Post yeah, absolutely. So, of course, you can always check out the latest on the challenger series by going to lolesports.com. Yeah, and there you'll find stats, scores, schedules, and more under the Leagues and Tournaments tab near the top of the page. So now, guys, let's get to it. Our first best of three quarterfinal matchup of the week, the top Top-seeded Cloud9 Eclipse versus Departed. And believe it or not, these two teams met in the quarterfinals of the first half of the spring series. And Cloud9 hope it's going to be deja vu all over again. Yeah, Cloud9 beat Departed, or as they were known back then, Pulse Esports, in the quarterfinals of the first spring series. And it was a back and forth. Yeah, It went all the way, the full three games in that best of three. And after that, it was smooth sailing for Cloud9, and they didn't lose another game and swept NIP in the finals. And leading and I, uh, sorry, leading the way for Cloud9 Eclipse was their AD carry, Yernin. Uh, means brain and Swedish probably call him that for most of the game. Uh, the Challenger series, uh, it's really been the most valuable player so far. Yeah, brain and Swedish led the EU CS in kills with 48. And in the finals, he shut down NIP's Freeze, who's having a monster Challenger series up until that point. Yeah. And Yernin is extra deadly on Jinx and Lucian, so I would not be surprised to see Departed try and take those away from him. Those champions might be Departed and Champ Select. And as we've said, lining up the other side of the rift is going to be Departed. After taking Cloud9 to the brink of defeat the first time around, tonight they're looking to finish the job and get some revenge. Yeah, not only is Departed played with a new name, but they have two new players as well. Joining mid lane Nick 760, jungler Kikis, and AD carry Woolite in the quarterfinals this time around are top laner Babunya and support Perm. And we'll see if they're the difference between a quarterfinal win and loss this time around for Departed against Cloud9 Eclipse. Yeah, and you gotta say, last time they played, it really was the closest series CNE played. Like, I can't stress that enough yes. that even these guys sit on only one point, they are, I guess, right now the best chance at knocking C9E out. And the thing is, like, Cloud9, they're in pretty good shape. Like, they're probably going to make it to the playoffs no matter what. Yes. If Departed lose here, it's a hard road for them. Yeah, I believe if Departed lose here, they end up with only three points, which means that Cloud9 Eclipse is going to be ahead of them. MYM, NIP, the winners of Osomniac versus Gamers 2, mm -hmm. and then Tick, Trick, and Duck, which we aren't seeing in the season, but they have four points. So they would be number six, but if anybody loses that NIP versus MYM matchup, mm -hmm. then they are knocked out. Yeah. So there's a lot on this game for Departed. Yep. If they win this, they will guarantee their spot. And also, it might stop Cloud9 Eclipse from being in that top one or two spots of the six, True. which gives them that first round bye in the post. Yeah, a lot to play for here. CNNE looking for a first round by Departed need to win, or they need NIP and MYM to win their quarterfinals. That's that's a summary for you guys, just in case. We worked this one Thank out before. You. Want to get that out there for you guys. We'll see how it pans out. Kragus and Kale banned away from Nick. Riven and Thresh. That's a Fabivim ban. The Riven right there, the Thresh. Voidal's most popular support. Why the heck not? Elise away from Kikus. It's got to be Cassidy. Smart bans. I don't right. I <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> it's been happening right. in Europe all day today. Let him go through there twice. Cassidy won both those games. Lulu, Lulu, Lulu the insta lock here. And this is interesting because Fabivim's much more of an assassin type player. He is. 
but he's going to play the Lulu mid most likely. Could yeah. be Voidal, I suppose. He hadn't played Lulu in the previous spring qualifier. Yeah. But, you know, it's if just you're a mid laner to the new hotness now. Yeah. Isn't a lot that counters it. Does very well in lane. But that means that somebody else is going to have to be bringing the damage to the table for this team composition. It's true. Well, and speaking of new hotness, though, I guess it's a little bit older now. Uh, the Annie coming in for support here. The jungle Vi as well to make things happen. So already the Bard are looking for an aggressive team. And just the Lockins coming in quickly. Caitlyn Renekton here. So more early game power here for C9E. Yeah, and really emphasizing that early game, trying to shut down Departed and stop them from getting a nice foothold in the game. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them counter with some late game champions and just try mm -hmm. to play that game and outscale Cloud9 Eclipse. Well, yeah, these guys already have two engaged champions. They can pick fights when they want them and I guess throw CC and leave if they don't. Yeah. Hopefully that'll work for these guys. Hovering over Mundo for now. That's interesting to me because Sauron 4.2, so Perseverance has been nerfed. Uh, I believe at this point the Cleaver width on Mundo's Q has yes. been nerfed. And they're still going for the champion. See how it goes. It's I don't not know. in. No, you're right. Maybe juggling around a little bit. Shivana does fairly well against Renekton in scales. True. Mundo does the same thing. But we do see Babunya. He has teleport already, like locked in as a summoner spell. So, yeah, he's just waiting for it. Good chance of so that. So that's map one. pressure there. That's why you would yeah, take Mundo. Is. Shivana doesn't take teleport. You take True. Ignite for kill potential in the mid late game when you jump on somebody's AD carry. Now it's like dragon control coming out there. Yeah, so now I want to see where this goes. Of course, the Lucian does come through for Wulight. Of course, Caitlyn. Order there for Yernin, so that's fine. Uh, and I, I'm surprised that the hover over is on Morgana right now. So when we talked to Elimination after uh, he brought Morgana out uh, back, you know, in, at North American LCS, he said, "Yeah, once Annie's banned, then you're happy to play Morgana against anything that's there." Kind of inferring or implying that Morgana's not good against Annie. Goes for it anyway. Picks up Wukong for the jungle. I want to see how these matchups go. Yeah, they do have Caitlyn who fares well against Annie because their ranges are very similar, 650, 625. Mm -hmm. So whatever harass you take from Annie, you can return. But the Morgana is really good against Vi. You can yeah, go ahead right. and stop that Salt and Battery and the lockup from it. And they get a Nidalee here too. So just stop some engagement, can actually absorb a little bit yeah. of the Nidalee Spear. Not too much because you, your support, you're not going to get too many items. Sure, but... but I mean, let's look at this, right? C9E, very little engage. You can you can try to whimsy a Wukong and run in there hardcore. Yeah. And to be fair, whimsy Black Turtle Wukong, not going to get stopped, generally speaking. But that's the only way C9E starts a fight here in any, like, meaningful way. They're going to need Wukong to get going so he actually gets a lot of damage on him yeah. and can start snowballing the other lanes. And then if we looked over at the side of Departed, their team composition was a mixture there. We had some hard engage mm -hmm. from Vi. Then we had the poke from Nidalee which actually synergizes really well. If you just stay off on the sides, you let the Nidalee throw some spears in, yeah. then you engage, and then Mundo can TP whenever, split push. It'll take him a while to get to that point because Renekton is Renekton. Yes. He'll clear those waves and bully Lane's you. difficult. Yeah, so the early game, we'll go over to C9 Eclipse here, and it looks like Departed want to stall out, get Nidalee to be that huge, just chunk people down for half of their HP, yeah. and get Mundo into those fights too for some objective control. Well, it's going to be a difficult thing to do. We'll see if these guys can hold up to the C90 early game. We're going to watch for the first 15 minutes. How far ahead can the blue team get? And here we go. Cloud9 Eclipse in their home color. So blue in the bottom left of the map. Caitlyn Morgana bottom lane. Lulu mid. I I guess Lulu's a lot more common now, but I like seeing when like champions like, sort of enter the main roster part way through a season. People just, oh, right, Morgana's really a good support. Before it was only the, uh, I'm forgetting his name, the support for Rokat, who's first got to really bring it out. Vander. Vander. Yep. Sullivan and Vander. Yep. yep. Vander's one of the first support Morgana's I saw, and everyone's picking it up now. Lulu mid coming up here. Oh, and it's a briefcase check, like always. Well, here we go. The Q comes out. Good damage there. All right. Oh, can you dodge it? He's in Fog of War. Well, Renekton's got the Good guess. Doran's Blade, so when you hit him, it was a big chunk there. That's true. He's talking himself, too, throwing out the briefcases and not landing them. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I didn't know the and math and off the top of my head. You get some of it back when mm -hmm. you hit somebody. You get half back. Yeah. Uh, think something to notice here, or to Ooh. note here, is that this is a rematch from the quarterfinals. We said it earlier, mm -hmm. and it, they are the only team, Departed is, that took a single game off of Cloud9 Eclipse. Yeah. They went through, I believe, 8-1, and one, mm -hmm. or 7-1. 7-1, seven and one? Seven and one, I believe. 7-1, and one, throughout the entire series. That one was given to them by Departed. And now they're meeting again in the round of 8. A little unfortunate for Departed, because they are such a good team. They just yeah, have such true. great coordination, and they actually believe that they're stronger now 
with the roster changes and the two new additions to their team. That's true. So if the games were so close before, and it turns out to be true that they are, we're in for a great best of three here. Yeah. And I'm wrong. Eight and one. I did the math. I'm yeah. like, I shouldn't have corrected you. <laughs> this is why you're the color commentator. I'm the play-by-play. -play. I just say what's in front of me. There's a flaming monkey running through the brush. Now a guy with a briefcase. He's going to throw it. He did. Got that one right. Kick is on Vi. Starts with the W. Good happy times here. I has in the jungle. Yeah, and you can see here that Nidley, Nick, he just wants to survive. He got the chow, uh, the crystalline flask. Chow yeah. is crystalline flask. You drink out of both. True. But the crystalline flask Punching to survive. Punching here. Yeah, exactly. He wants to just hold out. Nidley doesn't have great wave clear pre-6, mm -hmm. whereas Lulu does. Lulu's just going to shove those waves with Glitter Lance to the turret, and Nidley doesn't want to get poked out. So Nick, trying to scale up, so that he's actually relevant later on. Yeah, we'll see how the matchup goes. We'll track uh, the minion kills throughout this landing phase and see if it uh, goes sour for Anna, uh, for Nick here. So far, the duo lane, you can see Voidal playing fairly aggressively covered sort of by that Caitlyn range binding. going to miss. But the early push does come through for C9E. And we'll see if that punishes Departed much here. And yeah, level 2's coming out here for C9E. Actually, all across the map, they are just pushing those early game advantages Mid, we saw Fibbevan get it first, and this is an early game aggression team all across the board. Oh, absolutely. Well, the buff's gonna get cleared out there. Both junglers level three. Got their dual buffs, but they're gonna keep actually farming the jungle for now, so no super early ganks. Not gonna land the Dark Binding here, and they're gonna trade poorly with Woolite there. So trying to hold on. Perm has a stun up again, level two on Annie. Just using the auto attack harasses for now. Doesn't really mean much against Storm Shield, though, I gotta no, say. It doesn't. It just gets regen up so quickly, and you avoid some of the damage. Yeah. This is 4.2, by the way, guys. Just so you guys know what's going on this week. So, 4.2 is there for. Ooh, hold on. Damage coming across. Will I get pained down to 200 health? Pained is now a verb. I've made it so. Pained. Get pained. Get pained. <laughs> that's so. That's just bad. <laughs> Whatever. Uh oh. I has looking top lane. I guess it would be a noun in that case. Maybe? So I'm so pained. We'll see. By that. No. I has though. He's waiting. He's sitting in the brush, looking to see. Kikis will counter. Again. But if you're getting pained. Yeah. But Odomna's pushing. Babunia's only level three. Half HP. Kikis coming well around the side. No one knows he's there, but it might be too long before Vi shows up. Yeah, and he can do the counter again. We see people dive. Windows all the time. Gives Ignite a lot of damage. 200 health. The flash in from I has. Does he have enough damage? Ignite and Red Buff make it happen. Odomna for first blood. Kikis. He's there late. Finds I has though. This could be good damage. Flash not available for Wukong. Even if he clones, he's going to know which one is real because it'll have buffs. And it'll be standing still and yes. not on fire. Uh, but looks like with Odwamna showing up to support him. Uh oh, teleport coming in. Babunia wants to come on back. The flash cube blocked by the decoy. Oh, that was such that a was good smooth. move. That was smooth. That was sick. All right. Props to I has. So, teleport coming in handy there. It's going to get him back up to the top lane. But the early game aggression team, we see people call this all the time, dive the Mundo pre-6. Yep. And just get him even further behind so Renekton doesn't reach that mid-late game hump mm -hmm. earlier, where that just that slump where he's not as relevant. Look with the two bot as well. Mm -hmm. So that hurt. Pickaxe versus Cloth Armor. One of these is stronger in combat. Which one is it? The boots. No. I'm taking your present back and cast the game by myself now. <laughs> Do you get my badge? You don't have a badge. You never had a badge. You had a little sticker that said temp on it. Yeah. That's actually true. <laughs> I had a wristband. Oh, that's good. They just let Moving me up in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can conceal it under your jacket sleeve. All right, guys. Here we go. I has looking into the enemy jungle again. Level four on Wukong. They know Mundo does not have flash. He's going to get behind him here. Bottom lane is fine. Here comes I has Babunia, he is not in a good spot. Oh. I has uh -oh. a kill in my sights. Let's Coming up see. the side. All right, he's running down the river. The flash stun's going to come in and kill stolen successfully. Good guy Wukong wanted a part of that one. 300 gold to him. And this top lane is going worse and worse and worse. Babunia not having a good start to this game. Yeah, and the reason that he held off on it and let him get the kill, because it's worth more gold overall when you have an assist involved in it. Yes. So that's just part of Cloud9's strategy and also their way to get more gold and s snowball their, their early game. 
Absolutely. Let's see what they can do with this one now. Kick is thrown back up to the top lane. He'll soak up some of this golden experience. Oh, man. And Italy needs to call some Alcoholics Anonymous. He's got two things he drinks out of now. Just double um, fist in those. Hey, it's just a lot of water and harmony. Chalice of... Oh. Uh, yeah. So, actually, I got a really hand to Voidal. He's landed a lot of these Dark Binding Harasses. And I want to point out this lane has an eight minion kill lead right here. Yannon and Voidal are doing an amazing job of pushing down Wu Light and Perm. And... Again, I, I pay attention to the fact that normally Morgana is not chosen to beat up Annie, but it's working here. Yeah, you can just throw the black shield on every time you, you're going to get stunned so that you don't take as much harass. Mm -hmm. Because really, the stun isn't the biggest part of it. It's the follow-up. True. Because you're going to take a lot of Lucian poke. You'll take a Q, double shot, maybe another round of spells too. Yeah. Well, so. those will do physical damage. Yeah. Well, I'm not, they'll go straight through it, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you get stunned up... And let's just, I'm just taking the Morgana out of the picture oh, okay, for a second. Yeah, if yeah. you get stunned up and those things happen to you, Your this Morgana great. just stops the stun in general and doesn't let the setup happen. Gotcha. Yep. We'll see if we can make that one happen. Like right there. Black Shield of Yernin, he's chill. Perm. Still has stun up. Has stun so up. There he goes the for it. Double stun goes off. Damage on a Yernin. Black finally going to miss. The Q hits though, Wu Light, with the tip of that one. So these guys are firing back a bit, both sitting on their Vamp Scepters here. I has. 3 P visit top. Six is out. Ignite is up for Odwana. This is going to be hard. This is going to be difficult. He does have damage, though. Remember, you were saying yeah, about which one beats which. All right, Here we Pops go. Yulti goes in for the Sun. Ignite goes down as well. Do they have it? Of course, level 6 on Wukong. Knocks him into the air. Yeah, Babunia, you're right. Does go down. I didn't realize that Haz was 6. Yeah. That was the damage they needed. Picks it up. Very well done. The three ganks. Who up to Nick. But wow, that top lane is brutal right now. He's six from all those kills and soaking up experience. He's 2-0-1. Every kill has been up in the top lane. 100% kill participation between them. But look at his CS. He's 20 down. And since he's top lane, Departed says we need to get a dragon to at least stay in this game. It's an early game dragon, so it's not worth as much. Yep. But it'll still allow take it away from Cloud9 Eclipse and take that off the field. And it still means only a thousand point game, which to be fair, there were about 1,500 gold worth of kills in the top lane. So uh, that's going to bring things back a little bit closer. See where they can go from here. You're looking at the first recalls from the supports, getting Ruby Crystals. Again, it's a 4.2, so uh, 475 gold Ruby Crystals. Didn't finish the thought, by the way. So every, every game played this week and next week is going to be 4.2, oh, yeah. except for NALCS, which will be 4.3. But NA Challenger will also be 4.2. So yeah, All of the round of eight. Yes, all, all the so Challenger games are all in the same patch, because that's... I would suppose much more fair here. Yes. Uh, any LCS will be a bit uh, different. That will be 4.3. So that'll just keep that in mind when you see the games over the weekend. That'll be fun to see. It's always great to see the culture of the pro scene shape solo queue. Yeah. And things like that. Because we did put in some, like, Kha'Zix nerfs. Yeah. And if people are still playing him, it's like, all right, he's still a good champion. If nobody plays him and he's left open. They hopped off the bandwagon. And yeah. That's what will happen. I don't think he's going to go away too badly. No. The leap ratio is probably the biggest thing. But anyway. See where that goes. It's all right. We'll see him another time. Yeah, this mid lane's been really quiet, which every time I've seen a Lulu pick, Nidalee now seems to be the best counter laner. I will guess you pretty much go even, so it's not a counter. Okay. But she scales better into the late game, and yeah. she accomplishes more with damage, whereas Lulu, you need somebody else to just take all of your spells for you and be a huge beast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're setting themselves up here. Yeah. You can get a double knockup off of the Wukong, and he's well on his way here. Well, you said it during the pregame. You said, hey, you know, they're going to need Wukong to get big and have a big impact there in this game, and he's got two kills and an assist. He's level seven. Doing a great job of this one. So, heck, the requirement for C9E is met so far, as long as he can keep scaling up. Yeah, and I originally thought that this game was going to be jungler mid lane centric. Yeah. But it's pretty much just jungler at this point, because these mid laners are very passive. Yes. Bottom is extremely aggressive, and both junglers are down here now, and both teams are looking to engage. Well, more damage on to Wu Light. You've got Vyra lurking around. Wu Kung on the far left off the screen. Voidal sees Kickus is here. Black sh oh, the Timber's going to allow the CC chain to go down. Voidal goes down to a Mundo teleport as well, and there's the engage on to Yeren, but the knockup on to Kickus. Can they bring him down? Yes, they do. Now I has forced to run away, but stun again means he will fall. Babunia's going to tank up the front line there. Tipper's going to die or run away at least. Two for one, though, to Departed. And meanwhile, up top, Renekton takes the turret, and he's continuing to push in. He's going to get some damage on this. It doesn't heal up, but Nick is here to respond, but that's going to allow mid lane to push, 
and Ludo to possibly get some damage on that turret as well. Yeah, I'm not sure Nick's roam did much here. He's javelining away some of the minions, but there's a whole wave missed mid. The Vivian going to get this turret down to about half, so it's a good call for you exactly. Shields it up, javelin kills it anyway. Yeah. Whatever. Since Odwamne now has the Tiamat finish, he can push those waves with just a single call of the Meek and Tiamat usage. Yep, you saw them guy die right there. And the, right now, we see Babunya has just picked up a giant spell 12 minutes into the game. Yeah. Went for the boots first, the Ninja Tabi, to tr yeah. go ahead and absorb some of the physical I think damage. he was trying to like run away from the ganks. Like run he, away. Like, the thing <laughs> is, he bought cloth armor because he That's needed true. it, and then he died again with like 400 gold, and he's like, might as well buy Ninja Tabby. Well, he, he had boots and cloth armor with yeah. his first buy. Yeah. So I guess he had it in his sight from the start. Yeah. So 625 ish gold the first time. He couldn't afford a chain vest. That, that's my guess in this one. I didn't check myself, but I think he would have gotten chain vest if he could have. Yeah. So, red, uh, sorry, pink cord goes down from Kikis. Going to make sure that uh, that brush is swept away, but of course it'll be spotted. We'll see if that gets swept anytime soon. I have setting up blue buff for Fabivin. That's going to go over to Lulu. Puts her own trinket ward down, watching that gank path very thoroughly. Oh, and they are actually, we see Odwamne going over to the red. Throws down a ward, but it's gone. Yeah, a little bit too late in the counter jungle there. Walks through a tri brush ward, though. I has as well gets spotted. A little bit of dangerous territory here for Wukong. Gets pinged out, but no one's interested in stopping him here. 107 to 81 here in the top lane. Ravenous Hydra completed. Ooh, see where Odwamne goes afterwards. I has looking for the mid lane pressure here. There's no blue on Nick right now. So, Fibbevan can constantly harass him out of lane until he gets one. Because Primal Surge has a pretty decent mana cost on it, and the fact that you can use Glitter Lance twice with the cooldown reduction that he's already accumulated from Fiendish Codex and yeah. the blue buff, Nidalee's going to be taking a lot of harass. We'll see if Fibbevan can land the skill shots then, or if Nick has incredible That's dodging insane. skills. going to be a wave clear here. Will it in Voidal? Actually, he doesn't even kill off the rest of the camp anyway. Yeah. He wanted to block some of that damage. Didn't get in front of the cannon minion, whatever. Push attempt here. Bloodthirst, I gotta say, already done here for Yernin. He is a very big, high damage Caitlyn. Dragon's up in 40 seconds. And that's and just because that Wu Light's backed. It hasn't backed yet. Yeah, true. So he's gonna back now in preparation for the dragon fight, which is a great call. Because Absolutely. if he had showed up there, been like, I have a Vamp Scepter, you have a BF Sword, the amount of impact that Yernin would have had over him would have been incredible. Absolutely. Would have been team. It would, it would have made or break. Would have made Catastrophic. the team fight. Catastrophic. There you go. Catastrophic difference. I was going to say it was going to make or break the team fight. Which is true. Yeah. But now it's going to get made on both sides. No breaking whatsoever. I has. So things out with the red buff again. So we go through our third jungle rotation here. So See what these teams can do. As you say, Dragon comes up right now. AD carries are ready. Supports are ready. Teleport not up mm. for. Pabunya, he had used it previously down to the bottom lane. He's going to have to rotate right there. there. Guys! But Odwamne, he's already rotated there by himself. Guys, guys, Get the there's a ward right there. Please, Vibivin. Odwamne, please. Ooh. Oh my gosh, they just don't even care. All right, well, they got here first, though. I got to say, the rotation, you said no teleport. Doesn't matter. Odwamne down. Got Dragon. We don't care about that pink ward. They're all going to walk by it, too. That's just unfortunate. That's... That's a little bit silly. I gotta, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And so Odwamne actually goes for the full Ravenous Hydra here. You see some people sit on the Tiamat. So what this is going to do is allow him to heal even more off of waves and continue the push in the Siege, which is going to allow him to back less often. And you know I like that choice? Because you talk about how early game focused they are. c he needs to get ahead early. And the damage. Yeah, and so more damage for more playmaking. He doesn't need the fallback plan of, well, if we fall behind him, tanky. Because if they fall behind, they're going to probably lose anyway. Yes. It's a great choice. All those eggs into one basket, and you see it here. Wukong's standard build for him. Going for the Brutalizer next. Yes. When you snowball. Remember, Bjergsen was saying, well, if you get a Blessing of the Lizard Elder and a Brutalizer in the jungle, you've pretty much won the game. If you get it really early on, um, just well, snowball it. Our stats would tell you that's not true. No, but it's, it's not. it's certainly very strong. Maybe in solo queue, though. We'll see. I'm pretty sure even that one's not accurate. But hyperbole is fun. In fact, in fact, hyperbole is the best. Yes. I will say that definitively. Kabunia oh. gonna get stunned up. There's a knockout cannon from Wukong as well. Ignite is on. He's trying to run the ulti, but he is burning to death in two different ways. Actually, three. And then down he goes. I has lands the E, takes him out. Another kill. Four of the team's five kills is on poor Babunia here. So he didn't use his own flash. No. He had it 
basically accepted his fate. He was like, if I, can, I can't run away from this with just sadism, then I'm done for. Yeah. And I love how I has keeps coming top and synchronizing his ganks with the ignite timer from Odwanne. Yeah, that's awesome. Every time he has it up, he is ready to gank it and get objectives off of it. That's going to give them their third turret of the game. While Departed has none, and Bulite. Voidal going in for the stun's going to land on the perm, but is there the follow up? Lulu around on the side, whimsies herself. Dark Binding's going to land, but it's going to be the Mundo showing him to counter gank, but it's a 1v3, nothing for Babunia. But counter gank top lane, their kick is made the play onto Wukong. Dash from Odwam, the Nick's going to flash over, chasing still. No flash, there's going to be a stun for Odwam, though. He's got nowhere to go. Two kills picked up. Kick us and Nick making a half. So all around the map here, a trade two for one. And this actually went in favor of Departed. They used yep. their teleport, and Babunia is going to get something out of it down here. Okay, he's trying though. Voidal and Yerna. Black Shield is down. There's the haste buff going down on a Voidal. The kill comes across. Will they make it happen? Five to six and kills. Yerna not in a good spot. Put the trap down. Flash in for Babunia. And that's going to be enough damage. Well picked up. Departed has picked up four kills all in a row. So he, tele he teleported down bottom and said he was going to make the best of this. Some people teleport and then they will be like, I'm just going to back. So up nope. top, Ihaz was backing here and gets hit with the spear and then just completely burst out. A flash was also used by Did no fire was coming afterwards. Yeah. Uses his flash there and tried to close the distance. Do they do eventually get the kill on Odwamna. Yeah. But it was a good rotation to counter that, and now the gold is 1.3k within them each other. That's a much, much better start here for the Departed, who started the game 0-3 with nothing to show for it, aside from eventually a dragon. Yeah, it's an early game team from Cloud9 Eclipse, and they're going to contest this red. Oh, knock up on a kick of stuns, not going to get found there by Odwamna, and here comes the rest of the team. Smite does pick up red buff. Odwamna forced to run, but takes a javelin to the back. Can he dodge over the wall in time? He's trying. Pops the ulti, goes down though. Perm steals away the kill, or earns it, secures it, I should say. Support Annie. We saw Edward get a bunch of items. Oh, he's got Assault and Battery. And Here we go. Charge the batteries there. Knock up there onto I has, and they keep on chasing. Lulu ult plus Flash going to get them out of there. Flash in from Perm, but jumps into a Glitter Lance. But Fabivan, is he on the wrong side of all this? I has going to be safe. Can Lulu get away? Sadism was on. Mundo. We saw him earlier just tank a turret. Yeah. Honey Badger, but he's not going to do it again. Nope. No Canadian big in here for Departed. They're going to move in towards the mid lane. Tier 2 turret. Nick and Wulet going to take these down rather quickly. Haste buff goes on to Wulet. More attack speed here for the man. He will take down the third turret of the game for Departed. It's going to be another one traded, though, back on from Cloud9 Eclipse. These guys, they realize they're losing somewhere on the map and saying, we'll make a play elsewhere. And it's worked out so many times for both teams. Yeah, and there's actually a great synergy here with the Primal Surge from Nick on Nidalee, yep. with his AD carry, Wulite. Wulite has actually gone even in his lane, and I would actually say, yeah, no, really even, because he has that kill, despite being down a little bit in CS. Yep. So, when you put that Primal Surge on him, it'll increase his attack speed against turrets. He can also have more wave clear with the culling, because he has yep. an attack speed ratio. But now, Cloud9 Eclipse contesting another buff here, and departed. They're going to chase them down again. No flash. These guys are not flinching. Good uh, root right there on Voidal with spell shooting long enough to not allow the engage. Javelin's going to land. Pop, pop, pop. And down goes Voidal. Well picked up by Departed. Trading blue buff for a Morgana. Uh, not the best trade. <laughs> for which team? Cloud9. OK. I didn't want to like insult support players. I was like, you know, I could make the joke, but to be honest, Morgana's really strong. Okay. He's 0-3, picked up the Talisman of Ascension so that his team can get out of those as a unit now, instead yeah. of just he would have liked that last time trailing off in different directions. It'll really help him out. And 4.3 is when the mobility boot nerfs go through. Well, changes. Changes. They're cheaper. That okay. I, I like. It is cheaper and also That's weaker true. in combat. It is. It is different. We'll see if it becomes a nerf. I do want to see where it actually goes. Yeah. If people keep. I've heard both arguments. Continuing to pick it up. Yeah. yeah. So Dragon is going to be up here, departed, already in position for it. That's and be they, they have an Italy too, so if you try to contest this, he's going to continue to poke you out. And you can see zone defense being run here, yeah. right above it, by Babunia. So nobody can even get in. Mundo goes where he pleases, but he stops other people from doing that. Good job. You're right. You don't go anywhere. If Mundo's there, you don't go past Mundo. He is the ultimate linebacker. Great job there. And they're going to back. 
and cash in on that dragon. Gold, now even. So this early game team from Cloud9 Eclipse, it's getting to that mid game, almost late game here, where they're gonna start to fall off in terms of power. And True. Departed are just going to increase. They've just equalized, yeah. This is this is gonna be all kinds of interesting. So here we go, Departed getting them back into this game. And I gotta say, let's look at individual playmakers. So far, pretty much down the line for C9E. They're all on equal footing. But really departed a little bit more gold on their AD carry and a very weak Dr. Mundo here. Ooh, even through the shield. Yeah. Gets the Bevan really just chunking yeah. him there. And Departed have been playing this very well. You can tell that they have been waiting for this matchup. They were knocked out in the round of eight previously by Cloud9 Eclipse. They want revenge. They want to go all the way. And Cloud9 Eclipse, this early game composition is not working out the yeah. way that they probably planned it. They found parts of it, and they found some blunders right there. The four kills in a row mid-game, that was huge. And I got a really, I, I really have to hand it to Babunia, though. He's been dived four times in his lane. Died all four times. Outside of those ganks, 2-0 and 3. Yeah. Still found an impact. Five of his team's eight kills rest partially on his shoulders. Got camped so hard. Still shows up in fights. Yeah, all Mundo has to do is just slow people with his cleavers, chase them down, and not die. So he's building purely defensive, and he's well on his way to being that huge tanky frontliner that they want. Even more so than Odwame. So they don't actually, they haven't had a tank on their side for a True. while. Odwame's still very squishy, and here comes the assault battery. And we're gonna see that prove right here. He's trying to run away, get slowed down by Rand, who down to about a thousand health, knock up from Lulu. They're trying to keep him alive, but they're not going to. Down goes Odwamna. Now I has says, you know what? I don't want to be here either, but gets knocked around by Vi. Stupid and chased around, 500 health to flash in for Mundo, double kill there for Lucian. Now the escape comes in, Yaren is a little bit low. There's a cleaver to the face, still trying to run away from this one. But it's too dead, Voidal off on the side, can't help anybody. But Bunya is so tanky, he can just tank up these turret shots and allow them to dive past that. First turret is still up, and they caught Odwame out of position. And like I said, he's not very tanky. No, he's Went not. Went for the Hydra, and now he's paying for it. They didn't cash in on the early game lead nearly enough. Turret's going to go down finally. He didn't really take a scratch until then, and the team says, you know what, Muno, you didn't do it yourself, that's fine. We'll help you out in this lane. And the push continues two seconds until Wukong revives. Adromna's back. Departed says, we just want to clear that wave, now we're out. Oh, Abunya teleporting down bottom to get that CS. And Mundo, as your goal, your goal as Mundo is to just show up to the team fights and at least go even in lane, and then you win it for the most yeah. part. Because his late game impact is so much higher than Renekton's, yeah. that it's actually a victory for him and he died multiple times, but he's still in it. So huge yeah. props to him, because it's so hard to play from behind. Exactly. Such good moves. The teleports uh, sometimes looked weird, but turns out they worked out in the end. So I can't hit on Mabunia here as all. The replacement in, not exactly last minute, but the replacement top laner here compared to last split. Yeah, it was the old top laner had to leave for uh, school. It's Jokies, right? Yeah, yeah, and it was uh, yeah. The story is uh, the headmaster of the school is like, if you don't stop playing these games, we're gonna kick you out. And he's like, all right, all right, all right. Wow. Uh, I have to give up league. I'm gonna focus on school. Departed. I uh, actually talked to the manager about the replacements. He said, yeah, there's a lot of good players in Poland. Most of them are supports. So perm was easy to find. It was a lot harder to find a replacement top laner. They got Babunia. It's working out. Yeah, a lot of people are being picked up out of that Polish. A Chant. lot of great that, Polish teams. That Polish uh, pool, because yeah. we also see XMYM mm -hmm. picking up a new mid laner that we're going to yeah. be seeing later on in the week. Next week, I believe. Yeah. Next Wednesday, so seven days from now. Yep. Yeah. Mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. Seven days from here, we're going to see uh, Mouse Sports, I believe the team is now. Yep. But we are in this game. We're looking at Departed. They say they're the second best Polish team behind Rokat. We'll see if they can knock down Cloud9 Eclipse on their way to proving their worth here. Right now they're up four kills and they're up 2,000 gold. Gotta say these guys putting on a great show for themselves. 0-0-6 for Nick, the mid laner here. 2-14 CS already has two big completed items. We've seen those javelins hit and they hurt quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Void Staff coming in soon, gonna make it even worse. There's a lot here on the line for Departed. It's possibly their tournament life in the top six. Absolutely. So they are fighting for that, they are fighting very well, and they're setting up dragon control right now. There's a minute until it's up, so if you place wards, they will be around it. And if you sweep the vision, you might bait people into it. So there we see pink ward coming down, and he's gonna have none of that. Just clear that pink ward right up. 
Get rid of the wards. No more vision for these guys. So, take a step back. Slower game. They can wait for a while. Yeah, because they are clearing out the vision right now. They're trying to put Cloud9 Eclipse on their back foot and possibly face check something. They have more tabs on them currently and their positioning. It'll be up in 30 seconds. And really, Departed has a lead. Mm -hmm. And if a dragon fight breaks out, they do have a little bit of a better dragon fight team at a distance. But Cloud9 Eclipse is really in your face if we can get Morgana in there. Or a Wukong. Yeah. With the double knockup from oh. the synergy with Lulu. Yeah. Cloud9 Eclipse will be in a better position. So they need to close that distance, but Departed needs to not give them that distance. And if they get in the pit, that might be what Cloud9 wants. Well, it's going to be their best chance. They're only getting pokes. Not going to help these guys. They walk towards the front lines. There is Departed backing up, saying, yeah, okay, we'll play the poke game for a bit. That's all right with us. Dark Bunny's going to land onto Babunia. There comes the Coling, and there's the engage from I Has, but gets stunned up right away. He's going to go down very quickly. Perm in the back lines run away. Odwamna doing what he can. The Morgana ulti coming in as well from Voidal. They're going to drop down Kikis. Two kills for one so far. C9E trading kills back and forth. 3v3, the battle still goes. Yuna takes a javelin, has to back off right here. Two for two so far in this fight. And IQ still leading the charge forward. Can he find a javelin? Can he take someone down? They've been trying to run away. Dark Binding's going to land, actually, but the heal worth way more than the damage. No follow-up there. His team is already retreating. It's mid laner and ADCs on both sides, but a support on one and a top laner in the other. So there's more gold and effective combat stats here. For He's not going to land. There it is. Picked up the dragon. No spite on either side, but the burst came through. Departed taken even more here. 3,000 gold putting them ahead. And once again, they're going to back off. And I feel like because there's... I mean, there is engage from Departed, but they're happy to play poke. Them winning this game is going to be a slow game. Yeah. It's going to be them taking their time with every advantage. Yeah, and Perm, he upgraded his trinket. So now he's able to sweep a ward, then walk around and get a, basically a little bit of a duration of Oracle's elixir, rip. And now he's got a pink ward too. So he's looking <laughs> to deny vision and set up objectives for his team because they have this lead, and that's how you just snowball at vision. You make the other team not extend as far out, or if they do, you punish them with a good rotation. So Departed Gaming are setting themselves up for that, and the teleport, so he can split push. Let's see if they can do it. TP available right about now. Mm -hmm. Two big defensive items so far for Babunia. Spirit Visage likely to be next. So in the spirit of the slow game, mm -hmm. knock knock. Who's there? Elephant. Elephant who? A friendly elephant. At least he's not going to stop me. I hope not. That'd be like the worst thing you answer the door. He just like face checks you. What if he gored you with a tusk? Oh, that's a uh, ivory. Yeah. I irony. Yeah, there, there's something there. There's Don't something worry. there. My brain did it too, guys. Irony, I ivory. irony, and ivory. Too close. There's something here. They're, they're extremely close. So this is the denying of the vision here. What do you call an ironic elephant? Ivory. There. Okay, okay. We've, we've closed the book. New page. I don't know why you can, do a new page not, after closing the book. Can we not get another page in that book? Can we just like set it off the side, put it on the okay, shelf? New, it was good. Back in the shelf. Happily new ever book. After. What, what's the new book named? Cloud Nine Eclipse versus Departed. Oh, good. First chapter one. Early chapter one. Top. Four dives top lane. Yeah. Mundo was sad. Chapter two. Mundo didn't give a crap. Killed a bunch of people. Even though he was down. Yep, he it was not out. It's a really good stay down bottom after using his teleport very early on and getting those kills on both Yarenin and Voidal. Yeah. I mean, Morgana's not mobile, so as soon as the Black Shield is down, just go ahead and throw as many cleavers as you want. Mm -hmm. His Burning Agony will reduce the duration of crowd control effects on him. Yeah. So you can just go ahead and go straight at him. Morgana isn't maxing, wasn't maxing the Dark Binding first, so it actually scales up with level up to three seconds. So it would have just been a really quick 1.2, 1.3 seconds on Mundo. Uh, Mundo just keeps getting tankier though. Yeah. It's just, it's just painful. I don't, like, I'm just looking at the scene on E lineup and I'm like, who kills Mundo here? Nobody. Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Yeah, he's got his <laughs> mixture too. He's got a lot of armor. And yep. Lulu isn't exactly going to burst him out. I don't think she has enough damage to actually constantly hurt him. Not easily, no. He would have to make a lot of misplays in the span of about a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and then he still has sadism on the back of that. Yeah. 
And so once he ends up building either his Banshee's Veil or his Spirit Visage, yeah, he'll heal even more. Okay, so obviously it's not going to be Muna directly. So definitely the possibility exists to pick up other people. Yes. You've got Dark Bindings, you've got Glitter Lances, you've got Caitlyn Ulti. So I, I see two outs here for C90. One, pick off other people, fight 5v4s, you'll win those. Two, your enemy needs to get the six items so you can actually kill the front line. Those are, those are my two thoughts. Yeah, Caitlyn needs to get to that point, the Infinity Edge. Yeah. That key item, that fifth item for him coming out. When he gets that, he can really do a lot of damage, but it's not going to be to Babunia. And like we said previously, there really isn't an answer to him. Somebody needs to get a Black Cleaver in soon, and I would say Yeah, I you're has. right. Yeah, I would actually totally like Black Cleaver on IHAS. That would help. It would help Yernin, who's already got a Last Whisper, so the armor gets cut down. Um, even, like, Fabivan can give... You're in like the pick shield so that he can do even more damage with his higher attack speed. Like at some point, Moon, like I'm mean, gonna guess they could ignore him for last, but with him being in the front line, it's hard to. He'll eventually burn down Kate anyway. I have still farming though, 115 CS, 162 though to Kickus, the Vi. Did open up with Lustral there, but even tr but since then still went for tank stats. Branduin's Banshees, pretty tanky Vi as well. So even Kickus is hard to kill, and the rest of these guys for Departed. They're playing far back. Yeah, well, how do you counter damage? Get a lot of HP, a lot of defensive stats. Yeah. There's some types of characters that do damage that it's not that great against. I'm <clears throat> Cassidy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just constantly. Which makes oh, you sad. It makes me really sad. Anyway, we have a push coming here from C9 Eclipse into the mid lane. All five of them are there, and they're causing Departed to give up some turret damage and rotate here. Can they stay for it? Looks like a little bit too dangerous for Yarnan. Gets the black shield He's now. On the side. Here comes the jump in. Kick is what will he look for? There has been. Looks for Fabivan. Fabivan will live, though. The battle engage on the other side of the fight, though. Who's going to go down? Looks like the cooling's going to miss. Gabunia in the front. Voidal very low does drop down. One for one so far as Kick is dropped. Hule in the back lines, but he's going to survive against Obama and get the kill back. Fabunia has run out of ulti timer, but just gets away in time. Javelin blocked by a clone. Yernan takes a cleaver to the face as well. One to two battle so far, though. And the re-engage looks on to Yernan. Not good for Kate. Flash the way. Outruns the Javelin. Still 3v4 better for Departed. That was so close to hitting him. And really good. This is something that people don't usually put a lot of thought into. The Piercing Light from Lucian hitting people behind your target. Yes. He was getting so much damage out of that. And Wu Light capitalizing on that ability. We're going to look at it here. Kiki's goes straight after Fabevan. And... Not a lot actually happens to him. He doesn't get stunned up there by the Ruthless Predator. And in the back line, they start to dive Nick, and he realizes it, and then he just gets straight out of there. Yeah, but instead we got to look back at the dragon going down. Parted running away from this one. Just found the engage and wanted to make sure we kept track of what was going on in this yeah. game. So dragon went to Departed during that one. 6,000 gold. You're seeing this constantly go more and more towards the red team. Seen an early lead, over 1,000 gold. Went the other way with this one, 6k now to Departed. They're constantly finding more and more to grow their lead with. And every dragon has gone over to Departed. I think so. They have had dragon control since the start, because yeah. I has gang top, they took that first one, Yeah. and then they just continued to get them after good fights, and some of them were even. But they just have the champions to do the zone control, to do the poke, yeah. and punish you if you try to contest these objectives. Yeah. And Nick, he's low on mana right now, so this is a key opportunity for Cloud9 Eclipse with their full bars to go ahead and push up and Nick's impact will be very low. All right, so Cena is still finding things to do. Five to four in turrets. Of course, they're doing this with Babunia split pushing in the top lane. They've got a little bit more time till Munda reaches that turret. It's going to be Cena e backing up for now, making sure they don't lose any other objectives. There's a bigger minion wave bottom as well, so there's a little bit more gold on the map for Cena e to grab. Small things there to be gained. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and send Yernin up to that top lane, clear it out get himself that gold that he desperately needs to be an impact in these fights, because that's the way out of this little rut here. Black Cleaver still not completed. They end up going for Banshee's Veil first onto I has. I can dig it. And I'm thinking about it, the only thing that would really be super good against would be an Annie stun. Yes, so that which he can is be what's it's been happening to him. Yeah, he's been getting stunned, and that is their goal. Is the Departed going to... Set up for the same thing previously. Try and bait a fight at the Baron. Yeah. They've been winning the fights. Why not? They do have the better composition right now to get there first and actually arrive late to objectives. But C9 Eclipse, they can close the distance. It could be deadly for Departed. Well, you can see that uh, the Dark might get hit, but they didn't follow through on it. 
Nick got away from that one. Cena and E again. They're playing the siege game. This is this is interesting because they're the team fighting against Poke and trying to look for sieges, trying to look for ways to just push themselves in, abuse the fact that Mundo's down in the bottom lane, force the teleports out if they can. But this this is important because Mundo gets to the turret next wave. Cena and E needs to make it work on this push. Yeah, cloud nine eclipse. Here comes the teleport. They baited it out. They're back. All right, they back off. There comes the culling as well. Mundo shows there's the teleport of Ascension. And departed fine much. The Biven, what? Uh, okay. Well, the push worked. They got the teleport out. Scary Lulu comes running at you. Get out of here. Yeah. It's a pretty tall Yordle. It's fast, too. I Zippy love that. Yordle. Love that AP scaling on the movement oh my gosh. speed. She goes so fast. It gets ridiculous. This is Ricky Bobby status. <laughs> I want to go fast. <laughs> okay. She's got to go fast. Mantra speed running. Lulu would be a good speed runner. Oh, yeah. Just whimsy everybody. But anyway, got. the team's setting up here. There were a lot of wards from Cloud9 Eclipse all across this mid area. So they have vision of this. But they don't have a lot on top of objectives. And they're actually going to push straight up. And they don't want to be pinched from behind. That is what is happening here. That's what got them last time was Kiki's mm -hmm. coming around the side. And they're setting up for it here. He's on the back. Yernin's going to put some damage, and that's actually not good for Vi. Kick is forced the long way around, and Vault Breaker's down. Small window. Voidal takes a bit of pain, though, takes a shield to the face. But here comes Perm. He's going to go in for the stun. Going to land onto Ihas. Can they find anything else there? Nick in the back line is taking a bunch of damage. Rulet cutting back and forth, but Obama goes down first. One for zero. The engage going to keep going. Voidal's going to drop as well. Two for zero. The fight continues. Ihas running away. Kick is, what can he find here, if anything? Doesn't even need much more. Javelin going to get dodged. Yarn going to get slowed down, though. Not good for Caitlyn, trying to run backwards. Wulet's going to show up for the fight, and down goes the Caitlyn legendary for Wulet's Lucian. And on the uh, side of the map as well, I has falls. A four for zero engage for Departed. And that's going to prompt them to go ahead and do Baron with no chance of it being smite stolen away. For Bevan, he would have to be crazy to try and contest this. And if he does, he could give up himself as a kill, which would allow Departed that long lockout timer at this point, 38 minutes into the game. And so he doesn't go for it. Wow, nicely done here, Departed. Coming back from the early game deficit. And you can see now 13, 12, 14, 16,000 gold. These guys are richer than their opponents by quite a bit here on Departed. Big players, especially the 8 0 and 6 Lucian. I gotta say, Wulite capitalizing off these kills so well. And another turret goes down. And looking back in some hindsight here, you can't help but think I has he ganked the top lane over and over again, but Mundo's going to scale anyway. You delay the time that it takes him to become that huge wall, but Odwamne, as the Renekton, does fall off no matter what happens. That's just how Renekton's yeah. are play or that's how Renekton is built. Especially a squishy one. Yeah, and then if you look over, maybe he should have gone bottom lane over and over again and tried mm -hmm. to set something else up because Wulite is doing so much for his team. 806. Yeah, they it's definitely did not capitalize off those top lane ganks. Not enough anyway. No, you ha would have had to spill something over with Renekton. Yeah. And basically come mid lane very quickly instead of continuing to split push, bait out teleports and start just taking more objectives, spill yeah. that mid lane over into the bottom lane. Just basically trickle down. They did not do it. It's okay. But it, now they're Plus at three. that 10k goal ahead for Departed. Yeah. And this is the best situation for them with this team composition and also the fact that this is game one. You can yeah. use that momentum into the next one. Or, you know, it's only the 40 minute mark. Mm -hmm. We've seen games go on really long. Sure. But Cloud9 Eclipse, I don't see this team composition completely coming to fruition and overcoming the one of Departed. Okay, so let's talk about the series then. Because hmm. Departed, of course, we make continue, continue to make good moves. Look to see the bottom. Let's talk about the series, though. So last time these teams met, 2-1, to one, went in the C9E's favor. They had won game one and they had won game three. Yes. So we know that Departed have taken single games off them before, and C9E still wins the series. So there's still a chance for them, of course, as Windows taking no damage. He uh, heals it up so quickly. Technically, he's taking some. But It'll it increase really, every time. Yeah. It's like technically Adams have mass, but I wouldn't feel it. Not one of them. With so, the Baron buff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Back up to full health. Eats a trap. Pretty sure he regens out of the trap. Yeah. And here we go. Now turret attempt number seven here. Bottom lane inhibitor. Abunia still in the front lines. Is a tanky Mundo. Odwamna on the bottom side. Getting take, take a little bit of damage. I has to find the engage. Wow, Javelin's been the side of the head, though, down to half HP. Single Javelin's are just crushing the health bars of C9E. Yernin pushed towards the back line, not going to get hit by Vi very much. 
flashing away there. There's the Wukong ult, he's gonna look for a kick, he's gonna find one. Now can they get Babunya? No, Yernan's gonna go down, one for one, and the turret falls as well. Ihaz trying to run Babunya, staying alive somehow and gets away with it. Oh, that is not ideal. Two for one now. Departed making this one happen. Tibber is taking up the turret to go for Nexus turret number one. And they still have their AD carry, and Nidalee was gonna give them attack speed so we can take these very quickly, but here comes C9 Eclipse back into it. They fire one back, two for two battle, but two turrets died so far. 11 to 20, the overall kill score. Voidal running away with a shield on his back. They've been down to half. You can see Nick's javelins just hit so freaking hard. And departed back away with an inhibitor. And now that inhibitor wave is going to continue to push into the base. They can get other things into their site. Continue to keep dragons and just capitalize on all this. 15k gold lead now. This is going to push by itself. Cloud9 Eclipse needs to push this out. They had a good fight there at the start because Departed went a little too Canadian bacon. Yeah. Straight into the back line. And Departed, they capitalized on it, but it took a while. And the Mikhail's is actually what ended up saving, yes. Saving Mundo there. Good job, Perm. Making that one happen. Looking good for these guys. Nick, to grab another blue buff for himself on top of his blue elixir. Very nice and shiny. Needily there, max CDR on her. Uh, uh, didn't mean to do that one. No one saw that. It's okay, we're off the screen. It's fine. Didn't exist. Now, he swept that bush, decided to spin in it to the, the disco ball. In case there was a Teemo sitting there stealth, the knockup would have broken the stealth. He was making sure there were no Teemos. Okay. I will accept that one. Yeah. Cooldown is about a third of the way done. It'll probably back up in time. Yeah. It won't actually be much of an issue here, I don't, don't think, for C9E. Red buffs back up. He just wanted to be a Garen. It's true. It's good to emulate that champion. He's a cool Spin bro. Spin in the bush. We don't see him much. Yeah, I think last time we saw him was with West Rice. Yep. Complexity Black playing in North American top. Challenger Finals. Yep. I like that champion. Thing. It was cool. Didn't quite work out, but it's okay. So Top lane siege starting now. Cyclone almost available. So he will have it up by the time they engage. It'll take about one or two more waves. Baron up in two minutes. So nothing really in the sights, but that bottom wave is going to continue to push because the inhibitor is down and the super minions are just going to go ahead and stack up. So bottom lane is going to be scary. Mid lane, nothing too special except the Mundo. So actually, yeah, fairly scary in the mid lane. Yeah. Uh, top lane next wave, Wukong ulti is back. So Cyclone not holding them back too far. So they're going to haste himself. They don't find any engages yet. Javelin's not going to hit. Obama the back towards this mid lane. Eats a trap, loses Banshee's Veil. Nick still coming through from these guys. On the side, sitting by the pink ward, constantly just throwing javelins in. Even with Renekton and tanking a turret, Babunya's taking no damage. Nope. He is fine to keep that lane split. Now the bottom lane, the engage is going to come in. Mai has me. Doesn't find anything, though. Tabor's onto his head. Going to go drop down without doing any damage whatsoever. The knock-in comes through. Yarnin takes down with the javelin. Voidal trying to run away as well. Stun only on to kick it. This is not a good fight. Javelin. Finds a second one here. Good fight for Departed. 3-0. to zero. Nexus under fire. 45 minutes in. Departed going 1-0 to Cloud9 Eclipse. And Cloud9 Eclipse, number one, took the finals last time. And game one, just getting that momentum for themselves. Yep. Possibly spill it over into game two. And that was all composition right there and team yeah. fighting potential. I didn't like the composition from Cloud9 Eclipse at all. That was a... In my opinion, mm -hmm. not a respectful composition. That's we're going to beat you in 28 minutes. Yeah. Or, or lose. Yes, exactly. We're going to get outscaled. And it was option B. Looks like the bubble was filled incorrectly by Departed. And I got to say, you're right. Very early game focused, right? Rush Ravenous Hydra, camp the top lane, try to get wrecked in ahead. Didn't do much with it. So Clan and Eclipse need a new strategy here because you saw, and you said it all. You said it all. Departed, okay, their comp's going to work better late game. They held on to all those early game, like, like rough hurdles. Turn a counter, like turned a gank into a dragon attempt instead, and just kept finding things to keep themselves into the game, yeah. and they got themselves there, which is perfect. And Cloud9 Eclipse, you know, they have basically secured themselves into the top six, but Departed are fighting for that, yeah, because there's a possibility that they will not make it. But with that showing, yeah, they yeah. prove that they are capable of because now they've taken two games off of Cloud9 Eclipse, yeah, who overall record two and two, who are considered. The best team right now. Yeah, they, they so. won the entire last Challenger series without a scratch except against this team in the last quarterfinal. So here's Departed. 1-0 in the series. They've got two more chances to take one more game, which odds are pretty good it's pretty so good. far. 50-50. Yeah, looking pretty good for these guys. 
Um, and honestly, then, that means they're going to get a whole bunch more points. Their road to the Challenger um, playoffs itself, not 100% secured. I believe they can still lose that spot if everyone else wins right their quarterfinal matchups. Like, if the party gets fourth place, and then... Like gamers too, and everyone else like wins out. So there's there's a lot of other opportunities yeah. here, but certainly the hope stays alive best if they win here. Yeah, odds are much better if they win. <laughs> basically, there's basically. a lot of bracketology here, but basically, Departed are yeah. in much better shape if they win. And Shocking, Cloud, I know. Cloud9 and Eclipse they want to win because that would secure their spot mm -hmm. as one of the top two teams in points. Yeah. And then at that, you know, you get a first round bye, which is yes. Im immensely important. Right, so let's talk about that, that bracket then. So uh, now that we're in the second spring series, at the end of these playoffs, we total up the top six teams who have earned points. Um, there's basically eight teams that are in the running for those spots. Number one and number two get a first round buy in the semifinals. So they're like way over here, kind of on this side. Uh, three through six in points, just play a quarterfinal matchup, and they play and they go for it. And the top three from that tournament will play the summer promo tournament. And um, and those are the bottom three LCS teams that are yes. being relegated from the EU LCS. Which will be seven and eight, as well as the loser, like the total loser of the of the big like one through six playoffs um, of the LCS itself. Yes. So uh, important to not get seventh and eighth in the regular season. Important to do well in the playoffs regular season. And of course, important to do well in the Challenger Series so you can play for that spot. We'll see how the fresh, fresh blood stacks up. I mean, we've seen crazy teams like NIP, very good. C9E, very good. Departed, very good. All teams that you would probably be afraid to fight if you were an LCS yeah, team. Yeah, you do not want to be in that 7 or 8 spot. No. Whether it's EU or NA, nope. there's so many strong teams and up-and-coming talent in the Challenger scene. I mean, Rocat came from the Challenger scene. Yeah. And just out of nowhere. Top 3 LCS. And then another Polish team stepping it up today. Mm -hmm. Never had more than one team all from the same country. In, in the LCS. Like, think back to, like, first spring split. You had Giants all Spanish, right? You had, um, I mean, you had all Polish, like, MYM coming in there. But you've never had, like, two teams from the same country in the LCS yet. It's true. MYM gets out. In comes Rokat. So the Polish changing of the guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. That'd be cool to see, like, yeah, bragging rights, right? Two Russian teams coming in there. Someone yeah. can join Gambit, right? Two Polish teams. Someone can join Rokat. Uh, all goes down the line. Um, we want to see Ocelot return if we see Gamers 2 make their stand. And, and just to kind of keep you guys uh, up to date on what's going on. Um, so, of course, we've got right this quarterfinal today, another quarterfinal tomorrow. Um, next week on Wednesday, we're going to see both NIP and MYM make, uh, play their quarterfinal matchups. It's going to be on the 12th, seven days from now, next Wednesday. Uh, a little bit earlier than a normal time, yes. but even though no LCS, we will have Challenger games then, both quarterfinals there. So a lot more action, of course, to come as well. And so now let, let's focus on what happens now in Game 2 in this series. Let's bring it back here to part of our C9E. Early game comp didn't work. Departed clearly can play calmly. If a player gets camped, he still turns it back around on that teleport Mundo. So you're seeing an E, what do you do differently? You gank a different lane. Yeah. I feel like top lane, it's an island. Just leave it that way. That's fine. And Renekton, he'll win early game pretty much no matter what. Okay. But if he was going to go even with Mundo, Mundo would get a little bit of an edge. But then he transitioned that into bottom lane and just got Woolite going with that fantastic teleport. And yeah. Woolite ended the game with no deaths. Yeah. Like 9-0-1-6 or something. It was just really big, considering he was being bullied early by Caitlyn. True. He was down in CS. Mm -hmm. And Voidal and Yernin, usually, you know, that lane is a very, very dominant force. Yeah. And we didn't see that today. We saw Wu Light stepping up to the plate with that new support perm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fantastic. It was. It was a really, it was very aggressive lanes on both sides. Mm -hmm. But I felt like de uh, departed from the start. We're like, we have a late game comp. We're just going to wait this out. So Take your time. Make it work out in the end. And of course, they did make that work. About 45 minutes in Departed won that first game. Now, guys, we're going to take a quick break. But when you return, it's game two between Departed and Cloud9 Eclipse. Don't go anywhere. The 2014 European Challenger Series will be right back.